Tommy and welcome to Diffloc, TFL's brand new off-road series where we take used vehicles, modify them, and have fun with them off-road. Now today we're going to start with something that is a common problem amongst Jeep owners, and that's right here. Now these windshield mount screws are often rusty, they get stuck, and with their help at uh, John's 4x4, Ross is going to show us how to take these off. Hi, I'm Ross Houck at John's 4x4 Center in Boulder. Here today with you to look at installing a light bar on this uh, Jeep Wrangler YJ. In order to get this light bar installed on the windshield frame though, we need to get out these Torx head bolts. And these are so commonly rusted into place. So we're going to try a couple different techniques to get these out cleanly without causing ourselves a real headache. First tip, we always want to use a, a penetrating lubricant. Uh, in this case, I've got a PB blaster. This is just a quality lubricant. Hopefully I can get these bolts loosened up just a little bit before I start tapping on them. Let that soak in for a few minutes. And uh, the next tool I'm gonna use is called an impact driver. This is a spring-loaded socket. Uh, and so I can use it to tighten or to loosen. And the spring and the body are gonna transfer that force into the bolt head and hopefully not gonna lose. Well, these are tight ones, so we may have to get a little deeper and put some heat on it too. So we're already starting to uh, round out this bolt just ever so slightly. Uh, before I get any further with rounding it out, I want to try and put some heat in here to potentially loosen the threads and the rust that's in there as well. I don't want to get it too hot. This MapCast torch can definitely do damage to the paint, so I need to be a little bit careful. Getting that hot to the touch. Let's see if we get any more motion. There it goes. Ah, baby. Okay, one done, three to go. Out that guy. Wow. But we got it. So why did Jeep decide to go with uh, the Torx style? Of you know, the Torx head bolt does offer more grip surface area because of each finger of this star-shaped device getting in there. So it really does uh, handle a higher torque load than say a hex head or an Allen head bolt. They're able to tighten them to, to a greater torque. If someone's already been in and, and worked on these bolts and tried to extract them without success. So we're starting with something that's a little bit misfigured. Um, yeah, any bolt head can strip, whether it's a Phillips or a Hex or an Allen. Just got to be careful and try and use the right tools. More than likely we would have to drill and when you go to drill you're into a long process you want to take it very slowly get a good quality center punch centered in that bolt head and then very slowly drill it i prefer to use a left-handed drill bit and slowly work into the bolt sometimes the left-handed drill bit will catch the bolt and back it right out <laughs> the light bar that we're putting on is going to hold some uh, daylighter type lights, round lights on the roof. 
So we've got four mounting brackets here. This is going to be at the top of the windshield frame. We just need to install uh, the pieces that are going to go on that windshield frame on both sides, fasten it all together, and then we'll put our lights on. As far as just the hard mounting stuff, we pretty much got lucky with those bolts. We got all the bolts out without drilling and without tapping or, or using an easy out. So the rest of the installation is pretty straightforward. I think we'll be done within the hour. Wow. All things considered, that went really well. We got all four of those bolts out without uh, getting into a deep project. The light bar looks great on the Jeep, so I'm gonna proceed with the mounting of the lights and the wiring, and uh, we'll be ready for the night. Now, if we had to drill those out, how long would that take? Typically, I like to allow about an hour a bolt because uh, you just never know how deep it's gonna get. Wow. Fantastic. And if, we want to, um, if you wanna reach your website, what is it? Our website is www.johns4x4.com and uh, you can find us there and make an appointment, give us a call. Wrangler with her newly installed KC Daylighter. So these are just the standard 1995 sealed beam units. This is with the low beam on. There's a high beam, so nothing too impressive. Now a while back we did install some aftermarket HID off-road lamps, which I will turn on now. They take a little bit to warm up, but look at that. They're just, they work really well. And now let's try out our new KCs. Alright, so as you can see, they have a much narrower, uh, narrower light pattern, but they work really well. You know, I'm getting a lot of reflection, obviously, off the dashboard, so if I was attacked by a zombie or a feisty jackrabbit, I would be very well prepared. But I really think, given that it's an old technology, they work well. Now, obviously, a new LED unit would be much brighter, much more efficient, but I really prefer the old-style look of the KCs mounted up high, the round units with the, the little smiley faces. I think it looks really great. And I'm very pleased with the install. Thanks once again to Ross at John's 4x4 uh, for helping us out. They work great. Uh, go check out their website. And as always, this is Tommy with the Fast Lane Car. Uh, see you next time on another episode of Diff Locked. The interior also gets a lot of hate from the Jeep community oftentimes. It has a plastic dash. No, it's sometimes considered to be cheap looking. I don't mind it. I love the line of gauges here. I love the seats especially. The seats are one of my favorite aspects of this vehicle. And then amenities aren't bad either. The Sahara model came with air conditioning. It came with a great heater. It came with a sound bar, which means just like a modern Jeep, you've got your tunes pumped right into your ear.